Good evening, everybody. How are you today? Buenas noches, ¿cómo están? Welcome to Jesse, Jessica, Monica, Morena, Ramiro, Yanari, yeah. Raquel, good evening, Joao, Adonai, mm -hmm. Joel, Luis de León. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, right? So we are going to continue today with our uh, platform uh, in the section number two. So uh, as I said before, we are going to conclude this week the section number two and the section number three, and we are going to finish um, the midterm exam also. So we are going to have uh, the time to review the midterm exam. And then uh, next week, we are going to continue with the section number four and section number five. Okay, so what we are going to do today is to share my presentation that I have for you, uh, just for you to see in which part we are going to be working uh, with the platform. Uh, so I just would like to confirm that you can watch my screen. Can you can you watch my screen? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. So uh, we are going to work from a two point five lesson objective that says by the end of this class you will learn vocabulary for furniture and other household items. So this is going to be the first part of the class. Then uh, in the platform, you have this video that you can watch. So I will bring you uh, some other, uh, I mean, vocabulary and some definitions of, of some kind of furniture that we have at home. And then we are going to move to 2.7 to lesson objective that says, by the end of this class, you will learn how to form statements with there is and there are. Also how to use some, no and any when referring to different objects so that's something that we are going to continue doing uh, doing uh, today and tonight and uh, we are going to cover also part of the 2.8 there is and there are uh, so in the platform you have this video that uh, you'll see and you can watch it as i said before it's important that you can go to the platform and watch the videos because the purpose is that you can train your ear, your listening. Once you uh, start with the video, you start listening the right pronunciation of the words. You can continue um, repeating these uh, vocabulary, these new words, these structures, and then you can improve your pronunciation. Uh, for speaking, remember that you have the class. That's why it's important that you come to class. And then we are going to work with the knowledge check, but this is going to be at the end. So I'm going to stop sharing and let me go to the presentation that I have for you tonight. Uh, so we are going to continue with the class furniture. So I'm going to share with you. Uh, can you watch my new screen? Pueden ver mi nueva pantalla? Yes, yes teacher. teacher. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, we are going to start with this furniture. We have the shower, the toilet, the bath, the sink, the curtains, the table, the TV, the bookcase, the lamp, the wardrobe, the bedside table, and the bed. Okay, this is um, general vocabulary of what we can have inside of the different rooms of the house. We have the armchair, we have the cupboard, we have the sofa, desk, fridge, microwave oven, picture, chair, washing machine, window, iron, and door. Okay, here I just wanted to locate uh, some of the vocabulary inside of a specific place. If you see here, we are talking about the kitchen. In the kitchen, there are some pans, uh, there's a pot, there's a cupboard, there's a blender, there's a dishwasher, there's a sink, there's a fridge, right? Inside the, the fridge, we have some food. Uh, we have a freezer, we have a microwave, uh, this can be a microwave, microwave oven. We have a cutting board and we have a cooker. Remember that this is the cooker or the stove and the, in the home room is the kitchen, right? And then we have the bin, which is to, uh, to put in the garbage. 
So in the living room, we have the curtains, the window, and we have some picture, we have a television, maybe we can have a lamp, there's a bookshelf, uh, there's a sofa, uh, the floor, the coffee table, the cushions, and a chair. Uh, what is a living room? So I have here some definitions for you, uh, for you to, to get um, some examples of, of uh, these uh, names, these um, nouns that we are going to, to learn right this vocabulary so the living room is a resident in, in a in a room in a residential house or apartment for relaxing and socializing so we can say that the living room is the best place of the house to get together and maybe sometimes to watch a movie uh, to have um, a conversation uh, with the other family members and even why why not to have some table games, etc. cetera. Uh, the living room may contain uh, furnishings such as a sofa, chairs, occasionally some tables, uh, a coffee table, bookshelves, electric lamps, rugs, or other furniture. So some examples of furniture that we can have uh, or that there is in a living room is, for example, a wing chair, right? And the example that I have for you here for the wing chair is he was sitting in a wing chair. The TV stand, the TV was put on the TV stand. Sofa, I sat down on the sofa next to Barbara. Cushion, he lay on the sofa with a cushion under his head. Telephone, the telephone rang and Pat answered it. Television, Last night, they stayed at home and watched television. Speaker, she has already bought a new speaker. There's a end table. There's a phone on the end table. Tea set, what is the price of this tea set? Fireplace, he is reading beside the fireplace. Remote, have you seen the remote control of the TV anywhere? Fun. It's so hot, please turn on, or please turn the fan on. Um, floor lamp, I bought a floor lamp, in, I bought a floor lamp in the store. Carpet, the floor is covered with a red carpet. Table, he set a vase of flower on the table. Blinks, the buyer don't want to buy blinks. Curtains, the curtains has have faded in the sun. Okay, here I have uh, some vocabulary of what is inside a bedroom. Inside a bedroom, we have a bed. There is a bed. On the bed, there is a pillow. Uh, there is a sheet. There is a blanket. Uh, maybe we can have a carpet or a rug, which is the same. When you say a carpet, is synonym of rug. We have a bookcase, the wardrobe, the chest of drawers or dresser, the drawers, right? Those are the drawers. We can have a picture, a chair, a lamp, a desk, an alarm clock, alarm clock, and the night table. This is the night table, right? Uh, what about the bedroom vocabulary? Um, Learn vocabulary words from common furniture inside a bedroom. For example, inside a bedroom, there is the air conditioner. Uh, though the air conditioner gave, gave, conditioner gave off warm air, he felt cold. This is an example of using the word the air conditioner. Clothes ballet. She bought a new clothes ballet to hang her clothes. Bed. He felt too lazy to get out of bed. Uh, in here, you have two uh, names. We are going to take the balanced arm lamp. I need the artificial light on angle poise lamp on the writing table. Cut. In UK, you say cut. In the US, you say crib. The baby is fast asleep in his cup. Upholster bench. We sat down on the upholster bench beside table. Ginny grew up for her glasses on the beside, bedside table. 
bookshelf. Jack edged the dictionary in on, on, in, on the bookshelf. Uh, again, Jack edged the dictionary in on the bookshelf. Bureau. In the UK, the word is bureau. In the US, the word is desk. He deposited the book on the desk. Table lamp. I sat down and he turned on a table lamp. Mirror. She was looking at her reflection in the mirror. Curtains. She blinked when I opened the curtains. Ironing board. I need to buy a new ironing board. And here, there's uh, extra vocabulary for the outside of the house. Uh, in the outside of the house, you can have a washing line, the roof, the garden shed, the window, a hanging basket for the flowers. And, um, we have the wheelbarrow for some uh, gardenry, the path, the flower, the lawn, and excuse me, the flower bread, the flower bed, the plants, there's a bench, shrub, pegs, a bird box, and the fence. And the washing line, right? Those are the washing line. That's um, um, this is the washing line that has have some clothes on it. So uh, this is uh, regarding the inside of the house vocabulary. As you know, we already shared what is um, what are the names of the places of the house, right? So um, this is extra material to know more vocabulary about the furniture that we have inside the house. So I'm going to share with you, let's see. Uh, the next part of the class is about uh, two keywords that I want to share with you. Uh, we have been using them, uh, maybe we have not explained them yet, so that's why today I have these words for you and then we are going to practice in a conversation. A, a, and some, and any are called modifiers, right? Modifiers. And let me see if I can expand. Can you watch my screen? Yes. Yes, yes teacher. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. So, a, and some, and any are called modifiers, right? And uh, we use modifiers with a uh, click um, dash n plus a singular countable noun later we are going to talk about countable and uncountable nouns we use a plus a consonant sound uh, for example there is a bottle on the table an plus a vowel sound we say there is an apple on the table you can notice that we use a uh, when the next word starts with a consonant but we use N when the next word is a vowel, because if not, it sounds like strange, right? We can say there is an apple on the table. Uh, here we have some and any, uh, that there is another uh, modifiers that we use plus a plural countable nouns and uncountable nouns. So we have uh, affirmatives. Uh, for affirmative sentences, we always use some. For example, there is some cheese in the fridge. For negative sentences, we always use any. There isn't any cheese in the fridge. Questions. For questions, we always use any. Is there any cheese in the fridge? Right? So, um, in here, I have this chart that if uh, shows you the way we can classify them and how to use them. For example, if I have an affirmative sentence plus a countable singular, I use a, an. If I have an affirmative uh, with countable plurals, I use some, right? Plural, countable plural. And I also can use some for uncountable but affirmative sentence. Remember that some is always used for affirmative sentences only. When I have to talk about negatives, I use a, an, right? When I have a countable singular and uh, we have countable plural, 
I use any. When I have uncountable negatives or yes, negatives, I say I use always any, right? For questions, look here. For questions, for singular countable nouns, I use a, an. For countable plural, I use any. And for uncountable, I use also any. But if you see here, this asterisk is because we have some exceptions. Only um, when I'm going to offer uh, something, I can use the word some for questions only uh, in that circumstances. For example, if I, if I say, would you like some coffee? I'm offering you some coffee. So that's why I'm using the word some in a question because normally if you see here, it doesn't appear because some is only used for affirmative sentences. When we have plural, countable or uncountable. The other exception for using some in question is when I ask for, for example, can I have some water please? So I'm asking for water. So in this case, I can exceptionally, I can use some. Suggest, when I'm going to suggest something, I say, why don't we go to the beach this uh, coming weekend, right? I'm suggesting you to go to the beach. So I say, why don't we go to the, to the beach this coming weekend, right? Uh, only in these three cases we have, uh, we can use as exception, some for question. Okay, just to give you more details and more examples, I have here some and any. Some is generally used in positive affirmative sentences. For example, there are some flowers in a vase on the table. He needs some medicine. And here I have the exception to the rule that I recently explained. The exception to the rule is that we use some uh, in questions, if you're offering something to someone or asking for something by thinking that the answer is going to be yes, or you hope such that uh, answer. For example, would you like some coffee? And you are expecting that I say, yes, please. Yes, please. I, uh, thank you. So any, any is generally used in negative sentences. There aren't any students in the school. I don't want to drink any fruit juice, right? So you see, it's negative. Uh, for questions, I can use any in questions. For example, do we have any bread in the house? He hasn't received any emails yet, right? Uh, there are some exceptions to the rule for any, and it says that any can only be used in positive sentences if it's used with conjunctions such as if and whether, for example, will always help you if you have any problem or troubles. Or, but you see that we are using here if there's a conditional. Okay, so here we have some examples. Some, some is generally used in positive affirmative sentences, as I said before. Example, I asked her to lend me some money. I asked her to lend, to lend me some money. Some can be used anywhere in a sentence. For example, you can put it at the beginning of the sentence or at the end. For example, some of my friends can speak in English, right? Uh, some is not generally used in a question, only the exceptions that I mentioned before that can be used when you're offering something to someone and you're uh, thinking that the answer is going to be yes. For example, would you like some coffee? Uh, some can be used with uncountable and plural countable nouns. He made some mistakes. So mistakes is an uncountable noun, but um, we can use some with those. Any, as I said, is generally used in negative sentences. Uh, for example, I will not see him anymore. The exception to the rule is that any can only be used in positive sentences. And if it is used with conjunctions, as I said before, will always help you if you have any problems or troubles. But we need to have if or whether as conditionals. 
Any cannot be used at the beginning of a sentence. Any is used in questions. For example, are you allergic to any medicine? Any can be used with uncountable and plural uh, countable nouns. You can borrow any books, books of me. Okay, here in the material that you will receive, I have more examples. I won't, I would not read them because, um, because of the time we are going to, to advance with the class, but I want to show you that we have uh, more examples, right? And here I have an exercise that I would like that you can help me to, uh, to solve, right? So I'm going to need some volunteers. So, um, you know that we use um, some with statements, right? And um, we use uh, some also for uncountable nouns. We use uh, any for negatives and we use any for questions. So here in the examples, it says, uh, find the blanks below to complete the sentences. Use some or any. So I would like that you can watch uh, this and that you can um, tell me uh, which you, do you think is the answer. So we are not going to work in the breakout rooms now, but uh, I, will give, I will leave you five minutes in order that you can look for, for it and that you can decide, decide which is the best answer. No lo voy a mandar a los breakout rooms porque tenemos bastante contenido que cubrir. ¿Verdad? Así que les voy a dar eh, dos minutos para que lean esos ejercicios y que ustedes puedan decirme cuál creen que es la respuesta. Do you have questions? ¿Tenemos preguntas? Ahí tienen el cuadrito, ¿verdad? Con, con la definición y el uso de cada uno y los, en este caso, seis ejercicios que hay que contestar. So I'll give you one minute. Oh, it should be there. Okay. Or I'm tired. So the five is do they have some for a question? Hello? Were you able to decide which is the answer? ¿Pudieron descifrar algunas de las respuestas? I need vol uh, one, two, three, six volunteers. Necesito seis voluntarios. I think, uh, the, may I? Nat Nati, right? Natalia. Morena. Morena, adelante, Morena. He y después sigue Natalia, ¿ok? He doesn't have any pens. Mm -hmm. But I have some pens. Okay, perfect. Excuse me, I'm going to move just to answer the way you say. Voy a quitar la vista ampliada para ir contestando de la forma como ustedes me vayan diciendo. Any, you said, he doesn't have any. He doesn't have any pens, yes. Okay, so let me go. Okay, he doesn't have any pens, but I have? Some pens. Excellent, very good. If you see here, this is very interesting because in the first part is a negative sentence, yeah. but after the comma, you have an affirmative sentence, right? So right. The, the comma right. Im implies a, di a difference, yeah. right? Okay, Nati, Natalia. Okay. Uh, our teacher didn't have us any homework yesterday. Okay, perfect, that's good. Because it's a negative, right? You see here and you see that this is a negative sentence. Okay, number four. 
Who wants to? Another volunteer? Yo, teacher. Okay, please go ahead. I tired. Do we have some time to take a uh, nap? Okay, some. perfect. Yes. I'm tired. I'm tired. Do we have some time to take a nap? But this is a question. Look. So, um, it's any. Any. It's any, right? So, in this case, do we have any time to take a nap? Because it's a question. And remember that the rule said that we use some only for affirmative sentences. And exceptionally, when we ask for something or we offer something, right? But it's good because we can discuss it. Thank you very much. Okay, number five. Volunteer for Yo, number five? Adelante. I'm, okay. Uh, do they have... Any library cards? Do they no, have it? They... Mm -hmm. Otra vez. <laughs> okay. Do they favor. have do they have any library cards? Mm -hmm. No, they not have any. Excellent. Okay, look, uh, thank you. The first one is a question, right? Do they have any library cards? So this is a question. And the second is the answer, but it's a negative answer. It says, no, they don't have any. So in both cases, the answer is any. Okay, number six. Yo. Okay, tell me. Paul wants to buy some new shoes. Excellent. That's the way it is. Some new shoes, right? Because it's an affirmative shoes. sentence. Uh. Yes, it's an affirmative okay. sentence. Thank you. Okay, um, number seven. Volunteer. Adelante. Yeah. Okay, excuse me. I need to some information about the flight to Boston. Excellent. So, uh, in this case, uh, you're asking for something. So, this is the exception for some, right? Because you're requesting, right? Okay. Thank you. Very good job. So I need more volunteers because I have more. <laughs> so if you have if you have not participated yet, it's your time to participate. Okay, who wants to take number eight? I don't have I don't have any paper. Uh-huh. You say I don't have any paper. Okay. But Mary has some. Excellent. If you see it's similar to the previous example where after the comma, you have a different sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very good. Um, number nine. Mr. Smith. Any, any some question? Some question that... Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thank you. Thank you both. Mr. Smith has some questions that he wants to They're ask you. you. Okay, that's an affirmative sentence. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. Volunteer for number 10. Yo. They okay. have any people? Excuse me, could you repeat again? They have? They have any peep, any apples? Apples. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in this case, if you see some, some apples, yes, they have some apples, that's right, they have some apples, but they don't have any bananas. Any, any bananas, very good, because again, after the comma, it becomes mm -hmm. a negative sentence, right? So they have some apples, but they don't have any bananas. Okay, very good. So Number 11. I need a volunteer for number 11 now. I'm sorry, but we don't have any more tickets. Okay, so if this is a negative sentence. Um, I'm sorry, but we don't. We don't have any um, more tickets. Okay, let's see number 12. What do you think about it? Thomas Reed. Thomas Reed. Some, some interesting. interesting books last month 
Okay, that's a, thank you, my dear. Uh, this is an affirmative sentence. Thomas read some interesting books last last month. Okay, excellent. Number 13. I need a volunteer for number 13. I bought meal and some sugar at the okay. supermarket. In the first one, what do you think is? I bought some. Mm -hmm. Some milk. Milk and mm -hmm. some sugar at the supermarket. Okay, perfect. In both cases, it's some because we are talking about an affirmative sentence. Number 14. What do, do you, you have think? any? Mm -hmm. Do you have any coins for the bus? And the no, answer? I don't have any. Okay, in both cases, right? Because the first mm -hmm. one is a question and the second one is a negative uh, answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, number 15, the last one for this exercise. I need, I need, I need help with my homework. <laughs> I need some help with my homework because um, this is an affirmative sentence, right? Okay, very good. You did a great job, my dears. Congratulations. Now you know how to use any sum. Um, and we are going to continue with uh, this. Uh, here I have a conversation, but this is going to be the last, the last part of the class because by now uh, I'm going to... To go to the next, um, eh, just let me ask. Solo déjenme responderle a alguien que me escribió y no, no había podido contestar. Ok, alguien del, estoy en el grupo. Ok, I'm sorry, I know eh, it's difficult sometimes eh, to connect with the internet. Okay, so uh, in this conversation, we are going to practice this conversation later on in the class, but uh, I just want to, to show you and then we will move to the next part that is there is and there are that we started last night, but we are going to show you today in a, best, in a better and a structured way. This is a conversation between mom and Kim and Lucy. So mom says, come on, Lucy, let's make some sandwiches for your friends. And Kim says, I love sandwiches, Mom. I think there's some um, in the fridge. Is there any cheese, Mom? I prefer cheese sandwiches. I'm afraid it isn't any. I still have to do some shopping. Good idea, Mom. Mmm, scones with butter and jam, delicious. We all love scones and milkshakes. This is some, this is some snack. Okay, so they are planning to do something for it for eating, but they are realizing that they don't have some uh, important ingredients in the in the fridge. So this is a conversation that we are going to continue later. So I'm going to continue now with the third part. And in the third part, we are going to see there is and there are these two keywords that we join, for example, with the vocabulary of the house, and then we can talk about what do we have in the house, for example, or what, the, the, what there is in the house and what there is not, right? So, um, can you watch my new screen? Pueden ver todos la pantalla? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. It says, there is and there are. Uh, both expressions means I in Espanol, right? But the difference is that eh, en Espanol, ¿verdad? There is se usa con, con un complemento singular. Una cosa, una persona, un lugar. For example, for affirmative sentences, you say, there is a chair in the kitchen. For negative sentences, you say, there isn't a chair in the kitchen. And for the question, you say, remember that for the question, you have to move the verb to be at the beginning of the sentence. So you say, is there a chair in the kitchen, right? And you have to give the intonation of question. Uh, then we have there are. Um, se usa con complementos plurales, ¿verdad? Eh, de dos o más cosas, o personas o lugares. For example, the affirmative sentences you say, there are three chairs in the kitchen. In the negative you say, there aren't three chairs in the kitchen. 
And for the question, you say there are three, are there, excuse me, you have to move um, the verb to be at the beginning of the sentence. And then you say, um, is there, are there, excuse me, are there three chairs in the kitchen? And you have to give the intonation of question, right? Okay, here I have like a more um, structured uh, chart. Uh, this is going to be in the materials that I'm going to upload for you tomorrow, uh, for you to have them. The affirmative says, there is plus a singular noun. Example, there is a noun on the desk. Affirmative, there are plus plural noun. There are books on the desk. There is plus uncountable noun. Later, we are going to study uh, uncountable nouns. There is some milk in the fridge. Negatives. There isn't plus a singular noun. There isn't a pen on the table. There aren't plus a plural noun. There aren't any pens here. There isn't plus uncountable noun. There isn't any juice on the fridge. The questions. There is a cat on the, on the chair. The, in in the, the example, there are cats on the sofa, right? Remember that it's, this is a question with a singular. There is, a, I mean, this is an affirmative with a singular. There is a cat on the chair and you change it to question and you move the verb to be at the beginning of the sentence. And then you say, is there a cat on the chair? So we transform this affirmative into a question. In here, we have the plural. The plural sentence says, there are cats on the sofa. Are there cats on the sofa? That's the question. You move the verb to be at the beginning of the sentence. How many, here we have WH, how many, for example. We can use uh, there is and there are with how many, which is a WH uh, word that help us to make some questions. For example, how many, plus the plural noun, plus are there. For example, how many students are there in your class? If someone comes and asks me, how many students are there in your class? Maybe I have to count all of you and say, there are 20, there are 20 students in my class, right? Uh, how many days are there in February? That, that's another question. Look, I have to use the WH word first and then the the plural noun plus the are there. In this case, how many days are there in February? My answer possible is possible to say there are 28 days in February, or maybe there are 29 days in February. What about the contractions? There's, there is, there's not, is the contracted form for there is not. There isn't is the contracted form for there is not. There aren't is equals or um, the contracted form for there are not, okay? So here I have another exercise for you and I will need some volunteers. Uh, so in this case, we have to complete with there is and there are. And here you have a room, right? There's a room, a little bit of disorder, but there's a room. And we have here some, some uh, complements. A t-shirt on the bed, two books on the floor, a scarf on the floor, four pictures on the wall, many books on the shelves, a book on the bed, a laptop on the floor, some papers on the floor. So we have two, four, six, eight. So I need eight volunteers to complete the sentences with their ease, there are, or there isn't, or there aren't. So who wants to start? Can you start? Yo. Adelante. Yo. Mm -hmm. There is a t-shirt on the bed. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next volunteer. Siguiente voluntario, voluntaria. Yo. Yo. Adel adelante. Yo. There are two books on the floor. Okay, excellent. Number three. There is a scar on the floor. Okay, very good. Number four. Yo, oh. there are 
-hmm. for picture on the wall. Excellent, very good. And number five. There are many uh -huh. books on the I no sé cómo se pronuncia eso. Shelves. 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 Yes. Shelves. Thank you. Ok, my next volunteer, mi voluntaria que se me quedó ahí pendiente. Next. There is a book on the bed. Excellent, thank you. And next, volunteer for next. There is a laptop on the floor. Very good, excellent. And the last one of this part. There are some papers on the floor. Papers, there are some papers on the papers. floor. Papers, papers yes. on the floor. Excellent, very good. Okay, let's see number two. In the number two, uh, we have, yes, there is, yes, there are, no, there isn't, no, there aren't. Because if you see here, we have some questions, right? And then what you have to do is to watch the fridge, to watch inside the fridge and to answer. So uh, the, first, the first question, I need a volunteer for the first question. Yep. Adelante. Okay. Are there, add, any, uh, mm -hmm. are there any eggs in the fridge? Uh, so, yes, there are. Okay, yes, there are. Because if you can see, we can count yes. them, right? We have some of them. Okay, next volunteer. I need a second volunteer. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you. Are there any onions in the fridge? Yes, there is. No. no. Um, yes, there are. No. Ben, I can see on, onions. No. Onions. No. Cebolla. Cebolla, no. sí. Ah, cebolla. Entonces no, ¿verdad? No. Ah, sí, no, no. Pensé que es por toda la parte de la zanahoria era. Sí, okay. no. On, onions son las cebollas. Okay. No. There Entonces are. sería, no, there aren't, ¿verdad? There isn't, there aren't. Uh -huh. there aren't. No, there aren't. Uh -huh. aren't, porque, okay. porque lleva plural, onions. Entonces sería, no, there aren't, ¿verdad? Excellent. There aren't. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, okay. Gracias. thank you. Next volunteer. Me. Okay. Is there any lettuce in the fridge? No, there isn't. Okay, very good. Excuse me. Next volunteer. Okay, I need a volunteer for asking the next question. Joe. Okay, is there any milk in the fridge? Yes, the, there is. Okay, eh, incluso le puede agregar, verdad, some, si usted quiere, verdad, there is some. Oh, okay, okay. Eh, volunteer for the next question? Yo, teacher. Okay, Adonai, are there bananas in the fridge? Yes, there are, teacher. Okay, thank you. And next volunteer. Let's see. We only have, okay, please. Is there a cake in the fridge? Uh, yes, there are. There is. There, there is. is. There because is. it's only one cake. Okay, very good. Um, next volunteer for my next question. Yo. Okay. Are there any lemons in the fridge? Excellent. Perfect. Okay, Tania, thank you for being my volunteer for the last question, Tania. Uh, is, there any, is, pizza, is, uh, is there any pizza in the fridge, Tania? Uh, in the fries? Uh, yes, there, yes, there is. Okay, uh, you say yes, yes there is. is. Uh, yes, there is, right? No. Maybe, uh -huh. es que no sé si este es el, creo que este es cake. No, no sé dónde. No hay. No, ¿verdad? Uh, Entonces sería. No, no, there are. No, there no, isn't. There are. No, there isn't, right? No, there isn't. Okay. No, there isn't. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for helping me to answer this exercise. Okay. In the minutes we have, I'll send you to the breakout rooms, and I need that you can 
practice, we have two conversations. Tenemos dos conversaciones, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo le voy a mandar las imágenes of both. I will send you the images of both conversations. The first one that I uh, read before, that is uh, about a family that is planning what to eat. And they notice that they have, um, they don't have some ingredients on the fridge, in the fridge. So, uh, and the other, I'm going to read it now. Okay, let's see. Okay, the other conversation says, it's about, a, a, about an apartment. So, Nick is asking, how do you like your new apartment? And Pam says, I love it. It's downtown, so it's very convenient. Downtown? Is there much noise? Look, is there much noise? Oh no, there isn't any. There isn't any. I live on the fifth floor. How many restaurants are there near your place? A lot. In fact, there's an excellent Korean place just around the corner. What about parking? Well, there aren't many parking garages, but I usually find a place on the street. Is there much crime? No, it's pretty safe. Hold on, that's my car alarm. I'll call you back later. So it seems that there's a problem with the car. Parecería que tiene un problema, ¿verdad? Con el carro, como que la alarma del carro se le activa y está hablando de que es un lugar seguro, ¿verdad? So, what I'm going to do is to send you the images. Le voy a enviar las imágenes, ¿verdad? Y la idea es que ustedes escojan. You can choose which one are you going to perform. Usted puede escoger cuál de las dos conversaciones quiere trabajar con su equipo. Uh, in, both of, in both conversations, we use uh, there is, there are, some, any. En, en ambas conversaciones hay elementos de lo que hemos estado viendo en clase. Do you have questions? ¿Tenemos preguntas? Questions so far? No, teacher. No? No. Okay, no. perfect. So I'm going to send you the invitation for the breakup room. So please join when you receive it. And I'll try to just let me check. It's okay, Morenita. Okay, don't worry. Okay, vamos a ver. So let's see. We have 19 people because Morenita has some problems. So we are going to have six, six groups of three people, each group. Okay, please join. Como quedamos, ustedes decidan, los dejo ahí para que ustedes decidan quién quiere hacer quién y la practicamos ahorita si quieren. Sí, pero eh, esa conversación, o sea, no la tenemos que cambiar. No, sí. porque no, no, solo dije que la practicáramos porque ya tiene eh, There is There Are, que es lo que estamos viendo. Ah, vaya, vaya, está bien, está bien. Thank si you. quieren, yo comienzo. Excuse me, you don't have to change anything. Is uh, I have two just for you to choose which one would you like to work with, and the idea is that you choose only one, and then you are going to perform that conversation before the class if time allows us. Okay. Solo, solo vamos a seleccionar uno y hacer el performance. Yes, yes, that's okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Later. You're welcome. Ah, pues sí.
Ve, si eh, quiere comienza gusta, cualquiera. Soy... Uh -huh. Ok. Bye. Nick, how do you like your new apartment? I love it. It's downtown. So it's very convenient. Downtown? I think there's some hang in the fry, fridge. 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 Thank you. Ah, hay una Lucy. Entonces son tres. Sí, hay tres. Es Bye. Moon, King, Moon y Opa. On the fifth floor. How how many restaurants are there near your place? A lot, in fact. Is there any cheese moon? I prefer cheese sandwiches. This is I prefer. I prefer. I prefer. I prefer. I prefer. Yes. I prefer. Okay. I prefer. Okay. Excellent. I am afraid if a fright here is any I see. place just around the corner what about you parking well there aren't many parking garage but I usually find a place on the street is there much crime no it's pretty it's pretty safe hold on Think, creo que the things. Hello, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think my car's alarm. I call you back later. Okay, thank you. Okay, right, compañero, you tell. Ah, okay. Excellent. You have an extra minute in order to continue practicing, right? I call you back. Okay. Okay, my thank dears. You. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Who was the practice? ¿Cómo estuvo la práctica? It's okay. Okay, perfect. So, because of the time, I need to choose two groups. One group that can uh, present us the conversation about uh, mom, Kim, and Lucy, and another group that can present us the conversation about the apartment with Nick and Pam. So, who wants to start? ¿Quién quiere comenzar? ¿Quién hizo la de mom, Kim, and Lucy? Let's see, let's see. Vamos a ver. Yo por ahí escuché un equipo que sí lo estaba haciendo. Ajá. Vamos a ver, Tim. Teacher, buenas noches. Buenas noches, adelante. <ríe> Mire, de hecho, con el grupo que acabo de estar... Eh, Estábamos comentando, bueno, con Vladimir y con Yanari. Uh -huh. Que, bueno, yo la verdad he identificado a varios compañeros que pueden un poquito más que, que bueno, por ejemplo, que, que lo que yo sé. Uh -huh. Y, de hecho, la compañera nos estaba como corrigiendo ciertas como pronunciaciones. Uh -huh. Entonces sería, sería chévere 
que cuando hagamos los grupos, tal vez nos incluya, digamos, las personas que van un poquito más avanzadas que nosotros, que estén, digamos, con otras personas que tal vez tenemos un poquitito, bueno, no poquitito, no, menos nivel de inglés que, que ellos, porque en realidad así aprende, aprende más. Bueno, bueno, yo en lo personal me gusta aprender más con las personas que ella puede, pero imagínense, yo comienzo a corregir a un compañero, no, esa palabra está mala, no, pero ya sí la está diciendo. Entonces, eso pienso yo que, que sería genial, pues, que, que, sí. que lo tomara en consideración para que, por ejemplo, por ejemplo con, con, los, con los compañeros que yo estuve eh, ahorita, sí, sí, sentí que, que pueden bastante y en realidad me ayudaron mucho, entonces, a eso, a eso, que decir. ¿Mm? Excelente, fíjense que es un excelente punto. El detalle es que solo tenemos una hora, ¿verdad? Entonces, si yo trato de identificarlos y de, y de que por esa afinidad los clasifico, por lo menos eso nos llevaría cinco minutos que perderíamos de la práctica. Entonces, eh, yo retomo la, 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 la inquietud, ¿verdad? Pero en el sentido de que quien pueda apoyar en corregir, pues es más que bienvenido, ¿verdad? Y como dijimos al inicio de la clase, aquí todos somos una comunidad de aprendizaje y estamos aprendiendo. Lastimosamente, sí, no tenemos como mucho tiempo para hacer esa selección de manera cuidadosa, sino que más bien queda al azar del, del sistema, de cómo el sistema los ubica. Eh, lo, precisamente por eso es que tenemos este ejercicio de plenaria, porque aquí en la plenaria nos corregimos, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, la verdad que es una excelente idea, únicamente que el tiempo ahí es el que nos juega un poquito en contra, ¿verdad? Pero, pero pues sí, la verdad que es una excelente idea que los compañeros que saben un poquito más, pues nos ayuden, ¿verdad? Eh, a los demás que estamos eh, corrigiendo algunas palabras. Excelente. Eh, ¿Quién quiere comenzar entonces? ¿Quién tuvo este, esta conversación? ¿A qué equipo le correspondió? Nosotros como equipo 6 eh, agarramos esta conversación. Teacher, ok, platicar. you can start now. Thank you. Ok. Ok. Come on, Lucy, let's make some sandwich for your friends. I love ham sandwich, mom. I think there's some ham in the fridge. Uh, uh, is there any cheese, mom? I prefer cheese sandwich. I'm afraid there isn't any. I still have to do some shopping. Let's make some scones and some milkshakes too. Good idea, mom. Mm, scones with butter and jam, delicious. We all love some scone and milkshake. There is some snack. Excellent. I just want to um, correct the word idea. Idea. Good idea. Right? It's I. Idea. Okay. Thank yeah. you, team. Congratulations. Aha. Uh -huh. En en eso de scones. Mm -hmm. Scone. Mm -hmm. ¿Cómo se Scone. Scones. Scones. Scone. No lleva, no lleva, eh, eh, son como biscuits o bizcochos, pero ahorita le digo la definición correcta. Solamente que cuando lo, pre, lo digan, no le agreguen e al inicio. Eh, a los que somos, eh, a los hispanohablantes nos cuesta iniciar con s y, y consonante, ¿verdad? Porque iniciamos con s y vocal. Un scone es, it's a small Unsweetened or, or lightly sweetened biscuit, like cake made from flour, fat, and milk, and sometimes having added fruit. Es como una especie de tartaleta, en otras palabras. Puede ser dulce, pero normalmente salada. Eso es un scone. Ahorita le voy a mandar la, 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 la definición y la imagen eh, al, al WhatsApp group. Okay, my dears, who wants to continue with the next conversation? El siguiente equipo para la siguiente conversación. Hola, hola. Si gusta, cuatro donde he estado. Adelante, por favor, porque ya el tiempo sí ya, ya nos, nos avanzó un montón, pero adelante. Okay, eh, ya nadie me ayuda. Okay. A ver, Permítame, uh -huh. sí. Okay, comienzo. Uh -huh. How do you like your new apartment? 
I love it. It's downtown. So it's very convenient. Downtown is very much nice. Oh, no. There isn't any. I live on the fifth floor. How many restaurants are there near your place? A lot. In fact, there's an excellent Korean place just around the corner. Well, well, there aren't many parking. I know. Okay. What, about, what, about, what, about, what about parking? Well, there aren't many parking garage, but I usually find a place on the street. Is, is there much crime? No, it's pretty safe. Hold on, that's my car alarm. I call you back later. Nice. Okay, excellent. Only a couple of corrections. Um, you have to say convenient. Convenient and okay. um, the other one was, oh my gosh. A downtown and Korean, Korean, right? Korean. Okay, my dear participants, because of the time we are going to stop here, I'll send you the extra materials and I hope you can continue practice and I hope to see you here tomorrow, okay? See you teacher. Okay, teacher. Thank you. okay. Good night. be Good night. safe. Good night. Bye bye. Take care. Good night. Good night.